Hello, Sam here. So I get lots of questions in the comments, you know, on my various lag comp videos, you know, going all the way to Black Ops 2. And it's like, hey, Sim, you know, what's the magic numbers and stuff? How do I get my best setup? So this guy's going to be trying to capture that main essence of how to go and optimize your, you know, your setup to get the best gaming experience you can for Call of Duty, whichever Call of Duty you're playing. So this guy's going to cover tips on the Net Duma. And it's also going to cover some bandwidth control stuff and how to get yourself an open NAT, even if you're not using a NetDoomer. When you normally have one, it's a quick tip that you should be able to just apply to any router. So, yeah, I'm going to go into the Geo filter, cover some cloud tips on the NetDoomer 2. And, well, let's start off on the NetDoomer world map. Now, I've used a ping test and speed test to go and attain pings from servers from various countries around me. I've not done the entire world because I'd be here forever. And it's just to give you an idea. So effectively, I've got a little heat map. You know, the bluey colors being the super duper low and the super duper red is the, oh my God, it's really, really slow. So it gives you an idea of your surrounding countries, of what ones are good, what ones are not so good, and what ones, oh my God, I want to avoid. And of course, if you're in the US, you just apply it to states and you can see that I've got like Texas and uh, Seattle, for example sort of highlighted because, you know, those servers tend to be in those areas too. And they sometimes we get them in the UK, you know, when all Europe ones are down for whatever reason. But it gives you that idea. Having that type of information, going, okay, so I've determined the pings around me. You know, I've used a, I've had to use a mix of ping test and speed test because ping test doesn't have like, for example, any uh, servers in France. So I had to use speed test just to get that sort of picture. But anyway, back to the thing. So when you fire up the game, you're gonna see dedicated servers come up on the map. And now I've overlaid the uh, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One dedicated circles on the map. Um, and yes, mine are yellow and yours won't be. I'm a community tester. It's a completely, totally unpaid sort of position, so to speak. I give feedback. It's done all for the benefit of the COD community because wow, this channel is all about helping you guys play COD and get the best out of it. So yours are going to show up as either red, green, blue, or orange, just like the little legend. When you're optimizing your home position, you need to take into account, okay, I know what the sort of like the heat map looks like, pings. I know where the dedicated servers are. Let's position my home correctly so that the circle sort of encloses the dedicated servers that I want in the heat map of desire shall we say so you'll notice that mine's out in the sea so let's assume now that you've done all of this you've got an optimal geo filter circle so you come to gaming so when i fire up the game i leave the geo filter off this is to ensure that all the necessary connections are made and then i switch it on so you also see that i have the ping assist value set to typically 28 to 30 milliseconds and this is to ensure that I pick up any unknown dedicated server because sometimes they fire up new servers, you know, other ones are down. And so I want to make sure that, hey, I don't want to deprive myself. I want to ensure I can game on any dedicated servers in the newer CODs. And these can vary in their pings. Some of the good dedicated servers are just 15 milliseconds or so. Others are sort of 20, 25 milliseconds. Hence why I set it to like 28 or 30 in this example, just to cater for that little bit of jitter buffer bloat for you guys in the US uh, where the you know the, the the responsiveness of the server just fluctuates a little bit so I don't want the net doomer to say uh, -uh I'm not having you because you're 30 you know or 28 rather than the ideal 22 you know so at this point in the setup and in the ideal world everything should just play fine however sometimes you just get that strict moderate nat coming up and you go but but it was open yesterday man What's going on? So you normally go, oh God, I've got to reboot my console. I've got to reboot the router. Upset the whole house saying, I'm just going to switch off the internet away. <laughs> well, there is an alternative way and it sort of definitely works on the NetDoomer and I expect this to work for any router. So just simply close the game and then we go to the UPnP section and we just switch it off. And effectively it clears the UPnP table. Then we go and re-enable it, applied it, it's all clear. Then we start the game and hey presto, it's back to open that. Fantastic. 
All sweetness from now inconveniencing the household. Sweet. Okay, so another Netduma specific thing. Sometimes the cloud information on the Netduma can get into a bit of a pickle. So what we need to do is go and flush the cloud. So you go to the miscellaneous section, you untick bleeding edge cloud if you're using that one, I do. And then I untick the enable auto cloud, click apply, and then I go and retick both of them and uh, click apply again. Wait two to three hours and then it'll be all good. Um, so if you're experiencing a slowdown in matchmaking, sometimes it can be worth it just to refresh it every now and then, especially if you're seeing padlocks within your region going, way. Hey, I shouldn't be getting padlocks, that's within my zone. But obviously, bear in mind, if it's double XP weekend, etc., expect it to be slow. The servers are overloaded, just so bear that one in mind. Now for optimal performance, I recommend turning off the IPv6. You can find this under WAN, LAN, and miscellaneous settings. I covered this in my NetDemo speed test video, and also turning off enable deep packet processing. It just gives that absolutely maximum performance one can get and squeeze out of the net doomer. Now, when it comes to DHCP and reserving IP addresses, I get asked, how the heck do you do it, Sim? So you simply go to Device Manager and you click Edit and you get presented with a list of IPs that are assigned to your devices. You'll see your devices there and you can rename them on the left by simply clicking in the little box and typing in a more friendly name. Now, for example, you can see that my PS4 IP address ends in 115. Yes, 115. Go and make a note of that. Go to settings, DHCP lease, tick reserved, and then type the number in the box. And then that's all there is to it. So why do I do this? This is because I want my PS4 to have the same IP address every time to give me the most reliable UPnP experience. Think about it as like automatic port forwarding, but smart and to you know, give me a more consistent open NAT and a good gaming experience. Let's go move on to bandwidth control. So regardless of whether you're using a NetDoomer or another router that supports bandwidth control, uh, which allows you to throttle a device such as a gaming console, you're going to need to specify your maximum download and upload speed so the router knows what to do, or what they are and how to allocate the bandwidth correctly. So obviously determine your max speeds by using like speed test, for example, you know, speedtest.net, uh, obviously with a wired connection, don't test it with wireless. So on the NetDoomer, you can find this in the device manager section, you set, just enter your max upload and download speeds. Now, often people ask me, Sim, what speed should I set mine to? I would love there to be a nice, neat little answer that works for everyone, but it just doesn't work that way. There's no magic bullets. In the days of old Call of Duties, prior to dedicated servers, I suggested using like 384K or kilobits per second up and a mere 768 kilobits per second down. Now, for me personally, these seem to be pretty good numbers and they worked pretty well on the whole for a lot of the, you know, old CODs. But these numbers might not work for you and you would have to tweak them a little bit to you know, get it to work smoothly for you. But of course I'm asked, um, um, so what does the upload thing do and what does the download thing do? Now from observation and tweaking these values over years in gaming, it's like, well, upload seems to have the most noticeable effect on putting you onto a level playing field. So if the game starts lagging, you just simply got your upload speed too low and you need to increase it. And then, you know, it starts to run nice and smoothly again. Similarly, you go to download, and if you've got this too low, it's gonna affect kill cams and how quickly you can res respawn. You know, you press the square button or the X button. It's like, mm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Okay, respawned. And that would just be a, a classic sign that your download is just too, too slow. So in the advent of dedicated servers being introduced in for next gen Call of Duties, like IE Ghosts and onwards, higher speeds are needed. Uh, not massively, but you definitely need higher speeds because if you have too low speeds, it's just, hey, <laughs> your internet's not good enough for a dedicated server. You're just gonna go on classic peer to peer. You, we're not gonna put you on a, dedicated, on a dedicated server. So make sure you have a good speed, um, but not massively high. It's, it's a fine balance and it's like, I shouldn't have to do this to 
play COD, I hear you say, and I, I, I agree with you guys, but <laughs> if you're a passionate gamer about COD and want to have a nice gaming experience, unfortunately you have to tweak it a little bit. So if you've got a NetDoomer, you can use the network monitor on the NetDoomer to see for yourself how much actual bandwidth on the upload and download it's using. And it's something along the lines of about 768k to a meg up and about one and a half to two megs down. Especially when you're in parties and using party chat and all that jazz. So, as I mentioned, if you're in the newer CODs, make sure you don't set your speeds too low because otherwise you just won't find yourself gaming on any dedicated servers. And that's bad. So for me, for Black Ops 3, I typically set mine to about 20%. And it seems to be a right, nice sweet number, sometimes 40%. Normally, I always try to game at the maximum speed, and if I can't, I'll just sort of slow it down. Um, some Call of Duties, it's just, it's just weird. You have to, you'll find different CODs need different bandwidths. I mean, Black Ops 3 is the most noticeable, just like Black Ops 2. It's like, oh my god, I'm shooting first, but dying first type syndrome. It just doesn't make sense. When gaming in a party can feel a bit more challenging as you have to tweak um, those values due to a wider variation of internet speeds that your gaming buddies have in your party and think of it as a scale you're trying to balance it and you don't know what all those speeds are and you don't know what the magical formula is because neither do I you just have to tweak and go ah oh, that seems about right that's you know because you, you don't want to reduce it too slow because otherwise you penalize the rest of the party and everybody's having a bad experience including yourself so bear that one in mind so what I would suggest is find your optimal range by gaming solo initially you know for me it could be like 20 percent to 40 percent it could be the you know the best setting for you and then you know that sort of range and then you just try and play within that range within when you're gaming within the party try initially adjusting by like 10 percent at a time uh between games and and then just tweak it a little bit more you know smaller percentages to just to fine tune it so saying all of this, just bear in mind that sometimes the gaming networks or even the dedicated COD servers are sick or overloaded or it's double XP weekend for example and it doesn't matter what you do, the game is just not going to play as well. So bear that in mind, it works 95% of the time but you know, bear it in mind and I hope I've covered everything, I really do because I'm going to kick myself if I've missed something. And I hope all this sort of information I've tried to sort of sum up and convey in English uh, has made sense to you guys and that uh, you find it useful. I, I really do. So in a future NetDoomer update, um, you're going to be able to tweak the download and upload speeds for your devices. Um, so it's going to give you a much more flexibility. Whether we're going to see something a bit more super duper like uh, being able to uh, group devices together mm, that's probably maybe in the future maybe but uh, yeah I hope you guys found my video informative and useful I always appreciate a thumbs up please do drop down some comments down below because I'm sure you guys are going to have questions and uh, to stay in touch with any of my NetDuma videos or any other videos that you like like my booster videos etc uh, go and hit the subscribe button and until next time this has been Sim.